Good day to you once again, and thank you for tuning into our channel uh, this day. I trust God will bless you for coming this way. I want to share another thought with you today, and this one is in keeping with our recent studies uh, in the book of the Revelation. And uh, I want to start with reading a verse of scripture from John's Gospel and their chapter 5 and verse number 43. Now, these were the words of Jesus. And he says, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel, chapter 1, a very sad commentary on our Lord's reception when he entered the first time into this world. In John 1 and verse number 11 we read, And he came to his own, and his own received him not. Jesus was and is the virgin-born Son of God, second person of the Trinity, God from all eternity past, Emmanuel, God with us. And yet when he came into this world, he was despised, rejected, eventually he was crucified. But he speaks of a day when another will come, and he says, you wouldn't receive me, but another is going to come, and him you will receive. The Bible teaches the day is coming when an evil one, a false messiah, a would-be king, is going to come, and he's going to enter into this world deceitfully. Paul wrote about this in 2 Thessalonians, <clears throat> and he says this. Listen to these words. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, when Jesus ascended back to heaven from the Mount of Olives, the Bible tells us how the disciples stood with their mouths open in awe, looking up into heaven after him. Even after he had disappeared into the clouds, they continued looking upward. The Bible says two angels appeared unto them and spoke unto them and informed them that this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come again in like manner as you've seen him, go into heaven. The Bible says Jesus is coming again. Now, the scriptures are filled with information regarding that, as we've seen already. But there were a lot of false teachings and a lot of uh, misunderstandings regarding that. Even in Paul's day, there were people who misunderstood, and some were even teaching that the second coming was already past. But Paul is here speaking to correct that. And he says, don't be worried about this. Now listen. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Now listen. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That man of sin, the son of perdition. The Bible says that Jesus will not come, literally come back to this earth, until this one has come. Now notice, notice his traits. He opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God, setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then the Bible says this in verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That word let in the original language means to hinder. Only he who now hindereth will hinder till he be taken out of the way. So it's talking about the mystery of iniquity, that is the son of perdition, the evil one. It's talking about his coming. And it's saying that he cannot come until the hinderer 
The one that's working against him is taken out of the way. Several thoughts regarding that. I've always thought it had reference to the Holy Spirit of God. Many believe it has reference to the church. Uh, both are hindering the working of iniquity, certainly the Holy Spirit. One thing for sure, if the Holy Spirit goes out of here, we're going out of here. And if we go out, the Holy Spirit's going out. We're sealed by the Spirit of God to the day of redemption. Uh, the Bible says that man of sin will not be revealed until the Spirit is taken away. Now, we saw earlier in verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means that day shall not come except there come a falling away. Many believe a catching away, a snatching away. And they believe this has to do with the rapture of the church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ hindering that work of iniquity. The Holy Spirit hindering that working of iniquity. But when the church is taken out, he will have freedom and liberty to enter, and he will. Now notice, after the church is taken out, verse 8, Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, Jesus said, you would not receive me. I come in the Father's name. You would not receive me. Another shall come in his own name, and him you will receive. Now, here is that him. This is the one that he spoke of. He comes in power. He comes with lying wonders. He comes with the workings of Satan. He is an evil one. And the day is going to come when he is going to enter the world. Now, in a previous study, we were talking about these days. And here's what we said. That when the church is taken out in the rapture, phase one of the second coming, the world is going to fall into the hands of the devil and the devil is going to have a period of seven years to do his thing. He will rule planet Earth during that period of time through an unholy trinity. Now, we know that our God is a trinity. Our God is holy. It is a holy trinity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, the devil is going to try to duplicate, as he has many things the Lord has done, and he's going to have a trinity. It's going to be an unholy, an ungodly, wretched trinity. It'll be the dragon, which is Satan, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. The Antichrist is this individual that we're speaking of here. Now, if you want to see more of what the Bible has to say about him, we go back to the Revelation, because this is a Revelation study. And we said that uh, Revelation is divided into three parts. Chapter 1 has to do with history, chapters 2 and 3 with the present, and chapter 6 through 22 with the future. In chapter 4, we see the rapture of the church. Chapter 5 is an interlude in heaven. But in chapter 6, the tribulation period begins, and it begins with the appearance of this man of sin, the Antichrist, the evil one. Have you ever heard the saying, things are not always as they seem? You know, evil doesn't always appear as evil. The Bible says the devil hath transformed himself into an angel of light. The Bible says his ministers have transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. Things are not always as they seem. When the devil entered the garden gates in Eden to tempt Eve, to defile her, to corrupt her, to lead her down the primrose path to sin, he did not come in as an enemy. He came in as a friend. And he came in saying, Hath not God said? Let's have a Bible study. Let's talk about what God has said. 
and he took her unawares. She was deceived by the smile and by the facade of a friend, a false interest. When this evil one comes in, he's not coming in as a tyrant. He's not coming in as a dictator. He's not coming in as an evil one. He's coming in as a champion. He's coming in as a savior. He's coming in as an answer to the problems of mankind. Now, the Lord said, I come in the Father's name. You would not receive me. Another shall come in his own name, and him you will receive. That's talking about the world's reception. Now, the world as a whole is going to love the devil's pawn. The world is made up and consists of multiplied billions of wicked, sinful, evil men. The Bible says all the sin comes short of the glory of God. They have that wicked, sinful nature, and most men are more at home in sin than they are in righteousness. Most men would rather be in a bar or a saloon than in a church. Most people are more comfortable with the devil's crowd than they are with the children of God. So when Satan comes in, he's going to have the answer and he's going to appeal to their baser nature and it's going to be exactly what they want to see. Now, this is at the beginning of the tribulation period and here's how it appears. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Now, the seals were a, a series of seven judgments the first judgments that God was going to send upon the world. Each of these seals would be opened. The first one begins the tribulation period, and as the first one is opened, here's what we see. I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, my friend, many believe this is the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not Jesus. Jesus does not come in this fashion at the beginning of tribulation period. Oh, he comes as a thief in the night to catch out the jewels. But no, this is not Jesus. If you want to see Jesus entering into the world in Revelation, go to chapter 19, verses 11 following. That's Jesus. This one is the evil one. Now, there's a lot of imagery and symbology here. In our next study, we'll talk about that. And what we're going to talk about is the early days of the tribulation period. And we're going to talk about the appearance of Antichrist, how he will appear, the reception he'll receive, and then what's to follow. You'll want to hear that. So plan to be back, God willing, tomorrow morning. We'll share that with you right now. I'm about out of time. Thanks for stopping by. God bless you. Hope to see you tomorrow.